Okay, well, I'm going to tell you up front, this is probably not going to be a very good video because I've already started the project and I've only got one hand and to try to, I'm doing this with my phone. Uh, but what I'm working on is a 1995 Nissan pickup truck, two-wheel drive, and I've searched all over the internet and I couldn't find the answer I was looking for. So and after getting into it, I've got it figured out. So I thought I'd spread the word for somebody else. Uh, my problem originally started out, I was backing out one day out of the driveway and I felt a big clunk. I thought I ran over something. I got out and looked, didn't run over nothing, but it turned out my um, ball joints were about wore out, flopping and carrying on. So this truck's got 107,000 miles on it and so I'm just going to rebuild the front end, put new upper and lower ball joints and tie rod ends and I'm doing rotors and all kinds of stuff here while I've, while I've got it apart. But the the tricky part, the information I couldn't find out for certain, the, you know, the upper ball joint is relatively simple to change. It is right here. Now, was it, it was in there pretty tight because it just bolts in. So you got the bolts. Now, even though I took the bolts out and I beat and banged on it, it still don't want to come out. So I put the bolts back in, left them up, and whacked, whacked them a few times with a good, good hammer. It finally jarred it loose, and you can see the rust here. So putting a little PB blaster would probably help to let that soak. The tricky part, what I couldn't get an answer to, is the lower A arm. I call, I guess I'll call it the A arm. It's not shaped like an A. I'm gonna call it called the lower A arm, anyways. Uh, what few videos I saw, I was seeing people. They were pr taking this arm completely off and putting it in a press and pressing it apart and then pressing it back together. So I was hoping to avoid that because a whole lot more stuff you have to take off in order to do that and then go find your hydraulic press. So I, you know, and I thought well maybe I have to do that. I, I didn't know. But after getting into it I did get it solved without it. So what I did I went up to let me get up here and show you. Oh, went to AutoZone and got this little kit here and put all the parts of it on the floor. But you, you pay about a hundred bucks for it. Oh, Sorry about that, got inter interrupted by the air compressor. But anyway, you get pay about a hundred bucks for this tool, you rent it, you but you bring it back to them in 48 hours and they re refund you completely for the tool. So it doesn't cost you anything. So I got that tool thinking that would be all I needed and it almost was. Um, so how I used it initially, because this is the new one I've already got pressed in, but imagine if I was going to press it out, um, what I had to do is put the, the large cup underneath. But it didn't have everything I needed, because I also needed a way, I needed a flat surface. It didn't have it, but luckily I got to dig into my scrap pile and I found this plate of metal. So I put this plate of metal underneath here. So imagine those two pieces in place. Alright. I, and then I put, I position this like that. And I crank down on it. And by doing so, I was able to press the old ball joint down into this cup. And also did have to throw a little heat on it. I got some, I got some map gas. Threw a little map gas heat on there. And cranked down on it and got it out. It worked out pretty good. Oh, remember you got to take this little clip off. If it's all cruddled up with rust, you might not see it. But be sure to take that clip off or you'll never get the thing out. So that's how I got it off. And then when I pressed it back in, then you put that cup there. You put this on here. And then you use the tool. You turn around the other way like this. And the same way, now again, I still had to use my flat piece of metal. I had to lay it up in here. Of course, at that time, I, I didn't have the grease fitting on there. Because you got this, you got this nice, flat, strong surface you can press on. So I had this quarter inch piece of steel. So this is something I had to, luckily I already had. Uh, I got that to work. And then that, I just pressed it back up in there. And, and you can watch underneath, you can see this the area, get my camera, you can tell when it gets pressed all the way up, you can, t you can tell when it uh, butts against that other piece. So you know you got it pressed all the way. And of course, 
if you don't press it all the way, you won't be able to get your, your snap ring in there. So that's how I was able to get that done. And let me see if there's any other, other information I can tell you about this thing. You know, other stuff's pretty basic. You know, just, just well, let me, I got the other side I haven't started on. So let me show you what I did on it. Okay. I ain't started on this side yet. So, what did I do initially? Let's dock over here, isn't it? Let me get some better light. Okay, I got some more light. Yeah, the other stuff was kind of basic, you know, because soak all these nuts and stuff with some, some PV Blaster WD-40 first. You know, get the, get your uh, quarter pins out, get get that nut broke loose, that nut broke loose. Oh, I did have to use a pickle fork. Let me show you that. Which is a pretty common. There you go. So that's the only other special tool I have to use with a pickle fork. So, once I got that nut loose, that nut loose, because I went ahead and took the hub and everything off, because you can see my rotors are scar kind of scarred up. I'm going to get them turned. It looks like they're well within the limits. I'm going to put new pads on it, because they actually I'm going to change out the, the calipers, because I got some evidence of the calipers sticking. Uh, so once you get those nuts loose, I did take my map gas again. I, I threw a little heat right here, and then took my pickle fork, gave it a good few good knocks, popped it off. Same way with the top, and it came off. That part came off pretty, pretty easily. Really, really the, the toughest part is dealing with that with that lower ball joint. But using that tool I got from O'Reilly's, you can get it all apart and do it yourself uh, without too much problem. Just remember, you'll need a, a piece of a quarter inch plate steel like I got down here that's about the only thing else you have to get a hold of but anyway oh I was going to one more thing where's that crazy brake pad this is kind of unique I've never haven't seen this before but it's something you might want to be aware of if you notice the brake pad see how thick it is on one side and very thin on the other so I have in it that to me, that indicates uh, the caliper was sticking because this particular caliper has two pistons. And I've got it up here. And I did, I took an air hose and popped the pistons out. And they did have quite a bit of rust on them. So I'm sure that's one was sticking, maybe one wasn't. So it was, it was forcing the pad to come out sideways, it's making one side wear more than the other. So I'll put uh, new calipers on. Get the rotors turned, new pads, get all this stuff, new tie rod ends. Of course, I have to get everything realigned. And this poor old truck will be being ready to get back on the road again. It ain't much, but it gets me where I need to go. Oh, well, thanks for watching. I hope that helps somebody out. Have a great night. Bye.